Welcome to Inside New York. I am thrilled to be able to open this program with our special guest co-host, Richard Wesley, as we roll out the best in theater and film in all of New York. Wow. So, okay. <laughs> who else could do it better than Richard Wesley? Because I know my viewers know he's an award-winning playwright, screenwriter, best known for the play The Mighty Gents yeah. and the film Uptown Saturday, Saturday Night. Night. Yes. <laughs> All right. So hang in there because we're going to talk about it right now. Yes. A lot of the old guys thought that if you went to school, it would make you play like you were white. If you learned something from theory, you would lose the feeling in your playing. I wanted to see what was going on in all of music. Juilliard, in the daytime and at night, he'd be on 52nd Street. He put the bell of his horn right into the microphone and changed the whole world of jazz right there. For those people who have missed it, like I did, <laughs> you know, and, and, and yeah. Richard, uh, yeah. you have another chance because it's been going across the country with rave reviews, mm -hmm. but it's going to be featured on Sunday, and I believe that's the 17th. This is the first Harlem Film Documentary Festival, and it wow. launches the weekend of the 15th. Wow. Through the yeah. 17th. So I know Richard's going to want to be there. I'm going to try and be there. Mm -hmm. But if you can't catch anything else, I know you want to catch Miles, The Birth of Cool. Yes, uh, Stanley Nelson is, um, is an incredible um, uh, documentarian. Uh, and has done a number of uh, major uh, documentaries over the last uh, decade that have yes. made quite an impact. And, um, you know, this is, it, 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 yeah. it's, it's just a beautiful, it's an exquisite work. Um, I have seen um, sections of it um, that just held my attention. You're talking um, about Miles, the birth about, of Kool. Right. About the birth of Kool. And we do have a clip. Yeah, oh, good. Which we will good. introduce. Perfect. Perfect. Yes, it, throughout the interview. Oh, all right. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll give you a sneak peek also before. <laughs> um, but, I, yes, I do want to mention I've known Stanley Nelson for quite a while, well, from the time he did his first documentary. And, of course, we had him on first. Right okay, here on yeah. Inside New York. You're so always we're getting gonna everybody. The, you're we're always gonna, <laughs> yes, exactly. I love discovering people. Yeah. That's what really, you know, keeps mm -hmm. my energy up and keeps me going. Um, and he's had an extraordinary career. And I've had him on periodically, you know, throughout his mm -hmm. career. Okay. Uh, with, um, I believe the film was uh, Black Press. Uh, he did one of the Soldiers Black Without Swords. That was one of the ones that really yes. drew my attention. You know, and lastly, Black Panther, which I thought was phenomenal. Black Panther, and he also yes. did he did one on, on on historically black colleges yes. and universities. Yeah, and I know um, you must have really oh, yeah. got a <laughs> Absolutely. kick out of that, having <laughs> yes. gone to one. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Miles started very early. He looked at things differently. He saw things differently. Without a doubt, the most unique person I've ever known. Well, we're back. And I'm back with Stanley Nelson, who we all know is such a great award-winning filmmaker. And if you haven't caught yet Miles Davis, Birth of the Cool, then you want to stay tuned and catch it coming up. We're going to let you know all about it. But first, we're going to talk with the man himself, Stanley Nelson. Hey, Stanley! <laughs> hey, thank you it's so much. good to have you wow, back. It's good to be here. It's, it's been back. a long time, as yeah, I was yeah. glowing about having you first on many years ago yeah. with the Black Press, mm -hmm. Soldiers Without Swords, mm -hmm. and many others, the last one being Black Panther, which you know I thought was absolutely extraordinary. Thank you. And I'm very much, as Richard, looking mm -hmm. forward to catching Miles Davis, Birth of the Cool. That's why we said we got to let out our audience know that you can see it on Sunday as yes. part of the Harlem Documentary Film Festival. It is a closing night film. Yep. So, you know, you're getting advance notice, all right? Yep. So tell us about this film. You know, how did it start? 
Stanley. The film started um, by getting uh, arrangements with his family to make the film. Mm -hmm. So right. Right. the film is, is done with complete while. cooperation of Miles' family yes. uh, with Sony Music. Sony came in and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there's something like 60 different cuts of Miles' music in the mm -hmm. film. There might be a record for music in a film ever. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, a lot of music in the film. Uh, and we interviewed, you know, Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, Jimmy Cobb, Ron mm -hmm. Carter, uh, Carlos Santana. Wow! Um, Clive Davis, uh, so many people, right. Quincy Jones, yes. uh, so many great people who, who who knew Miles and played with Miles. Um, you know, it's wow. a, I, I'm very, 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 very proud of the film. We found footage of Miles that uh, home movies that had never mm -hmm. been seen before. But I think one of the main things about the film is uh, it's kind of narrated by Miles. Mm -hmm. So we have an actor, um, you know, a voice actor who kind of. Um, I, I don't want to say reads because he, he more like plays Miles um, mm -hmm. in Miles' own words. Carl so, Lumley. Yeah, Carl Lumley. Is who great, I'm very great, familiar uh, with. Great, great actor. Great actor. Yeah, yeah, I have he, to, to just have to pause for a second because I first saw his work in August Wilson's Jitney. Yeah. And he mm -hmm. was extra. I can remember, and that was, wow, 19. I don't know, I think in the 90s, I believe. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a long, 90s. long time yeah. ago, and he still yeah. left an indelible impression. Yeah, no, so. he's, he's great, and, and so he kind of, you know, um, does Miles. So, you know, it's it's Miles' story, it's a biography, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of uh, narrated, mm -hmm. you know, by Miles, commenting mm -hmm. on his his own life. Uh, Miles' uh, first wife, Frances, uh, is in it, and she's just, just, I mean, she steals the show. I can't. <laughs> Miles and Francis. I mean, we were a hot couple. Oh, you gotta can't see the wait. film. Well, you gotta see the film. I want to see it on the big screen. They yeah, did send me the, yeah. you know, the link so I could see it. But I said to myself, no, I want to see it. Something of this, you know, historic significance on mm -hmm. the big screen. Yeah, no, it's so. beautiful. It's, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's just been going great. I mean, the film's played all over the country. Um, I heard it was going on nationwide yeah, tour. Yeah, we went on a nationwide tour, <laughs> which was nuts. You know, um, we went to L.A. and opened in L.A. and Herbie Hancock and Wayne Shorter uh, both showed up for the premiere right. there. Yeah, Jazz royalty. There, yeah, yeah, they both yeah. lived there. Jazz so royalty. It's been it's just been an incredible experience, and um, you know I'm so glad to be able to to have a, a couple more screenings in New York. Yes. You know, on because the, it, November seventeenth, right. as you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. at part of, as part of a uh, Harlem Doc Fest. You know, right? So. Yes, and that's kicking off uh, in, in this week when this airs. Why mm -hmm. did you decide to do this work? Because now, did it just come from the back of your mind, or did somebody say, "Hey, you know, you should do"? That's something I wanted to do for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a great jazz fan. I love mm -hmm. jazz, and um, I've you know I've done a lot of films that have music as part of the film. Yes. I mean, yeah, music is part of it. But I wanted to do a real music film. I did a film years ago on Sweet Honey and the Rock, but mm -hmm. since then we hadn't really done anything on just music. And you know, we were just thinking about what was there, and then mm -hmm. you know, Miles. Who, who's better than Miles? One as a great, great, great musician, but also. Because Miles is so, such a complicated character, and the film is, yeah. is warts and all. Yeah, know? it was. It, it's that complexity um, uh, that that I'm interested in, uh, and, and why I'm anxious to see the film, because Miles, tr he, trend. It, it's sort of like he, he transcends all these different musical eras. Yeah. You know, from, from from where jazz was when he was a teenager mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. what it was uh, during his twenties and thirties, right, right. and then that that whole transition he he underwent uh, in the late fifties, going into the sixties, then from the sixties into the seventies. Right. I mean, this is a man who goes from bebop to fusion. Right. You know, and and at, at each stage he was the trendsetter. Yeah. And so when I see the film, I'm gonna be very interested in hearing it. From his perspective, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I mean, we we have a we have a, a clip of Miles um, near the end of his life playing mm -hmm. with Prince, 
Yes. You know, in the, in yes. The films. Yes. So, you know, Miles. Miles, as as we like to say, Miles is the only musician who played with Charlie Parker and played with Prince. You know, mm -hmm. and everybody in between. And so there, there's mm -hmm. that, there's that sense in the film. But you know, I mean, I think that one of the things that that I think makes the film really rich is that Miles is so complex. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's this complex guy. You know, on top of the music. Mm -hmm. There's not many jazz musicians who transcend the music. Miles was an icon, mm -hmm. you know, um, not only for his music, but for the way he dressed. Miles was on the best dress list, you know, Esquire mm -hmm. Magazine's best dress list in like 1959. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in 1959. He was a character. So, you know, mm -hmm. this was Miles, so he transcends you know, just the great jazz, and the great jazz is just, is enough, yeah. you know, it's more right, than enough. Right. But Miles but was bigger full. than that, and yeah. so I think, so it, it's kind of what makes the story work. But also Miles, you know, we're very clear about this in the film, Miles had demons, you yes. know, and we talk about his demons, his abuse of drugs, his abuse of women, you know, we, we, we discuss all that, and, and, and people who knew, knew Miles talk talk about that. Again, his, his first wife, Frances, is very clear on that and, and, mm -hmm. and is just in, incredible, you know, um, on, on some of the abuse that, that, that she took from Miles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, for you, what was the biggest challenge at this point? I mean, to a certain extent, you know, you've done so many films, it's, I can't imagine there being anything new. It's but all new. It, that's that's a great yeah. thing about filmmaking. Okay. You know, that's why I love it because it's it's new every time, and and you know I, I I've got so much to learn, you know always. But I, I would say that that one of the things in this film is that we were very clear. You know, we were all trying to put everything that we had into this film, and I think you see mm -hmm. it in the film. I mean, you know, this is like the culmination of, of a lifetime. I mean, I get to make a film on Miles Davis, you yeah. know, and the film was well funded. It was like, it was mm -hmm. funded mm -hmm. uh, by American Masters on PBS right. and, and another a company called Eagle, Eagle Rock uh, out of London, who's part of Universal Film, Music on Film, so mm -hmm. they funded the film, and you know, and, and we get a chance to make a film about Miles. In answer to your question, I guess one of the hardest things is that I get to make a film about Miles. Yeah. So, you know, like on my shoulders, right. Miles Davis exactly. saying, like, don't mess this up. Right, exactly. You know, yeah, don't mess hard. this up. So, yeah. you know, I'm sure you it's know, like Spike doing Malcolm X. You yeah, know, there's you always going to be those people who knew him and, and feel like, oh, now you didn't know him. And, you know, uh, so, yeah, but, you know, right. I mean, I, you know, like yeah. Malcolm you X, which I think is a that. beautiful film, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I think that, that we were successful in. in, in making a film you know um, one thing that's that's been great is his family um, you know bought in and and they never saw anything of the film until we were finished um, mm. until we, we the film premiered at Sundance Film Festival and I sent it to him the night before in Sundance because I, 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 I was going to Sundance. <laughs> right, and you didn't like, want them to they, say, you better if, hold that. Right, right. <laughs> if, they, if they didn't like right. it, we can, we, can, we can fix that when we got back. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. I was going, I was going to Sundance. Right. So uh, they, you know, we, uh, we they, they saw the film and, and they've been the biggest supporters in some mm -hmm. ways. I mean, they love the film and, and uh, you know, because they say that's Miles, warts and all. Mm -hmm. And probably the biggest compliment that anybody gave me is, is they said, you know, Miles would have loved this film. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, Good. I don't know about that, okay. but yeah, I'm glad that you yeah. said it. Yeah, that I'm sounds like a blessing. You know, in in um, uh, selecting out um, those passages um, for the narration, mm -hmm. um, where there, you know, are we going to see segments in there in which maybe Miles makes some furtive effort to try to explain his complexities? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Miles. Mm -hmm. Miles. Miles. The thing. Great thing about Miles mm -hmm. is, you know, um, a lot of it is it, we used uh, Quincy Troop's book, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the the autobiography right. that he wrote with mm -hmm. Miles. A lot. Some of it is from other other interviews. But as Miles um, later in life, when Miles wrote the book and 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 kind of did more interviews, mm -hmm. he was very reflective on himself and and talks about it. You know, there's one great quote in the film where Miles says, you know. Um, I was just, I, he said something like, I was cold to just about everybody because mm. it was a way to keep people away from me. Mm. And, that, mm. and that worked for a large part of my life, mm. but then it started not to work. You know, and so Miles is very, very open about, you know, his, 
his relationships, about his abusiveness to women, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, about the fact that he could be very cold. And, and the thing that drove Miles was the music. You know, like mm -hmm. in the bottom line, that's all Miles finally, you know, Miles, that's what Miles cared about was the music. You know, mm -hmm. if he had to cut off a family member, if he had to cut off a woman, if he had to cut off anything, mm -hmm. Miles did it because the music was was central to Miles. Yeah, well, so, he lived for that. Let me just get to some of the, uh, you know, the technicalities mm -hmm. of putting this together. Um, so, obviously, the birth of the idea came, you know, a while back. But in terms of, you know, when you started working on the film, what was, like, the time frame? It was about uh, three years from the time we started because... Um, we, we, we early on got funding from American Masters and we got funding uh, from Eagle Rock Entertainment. And so once we had the funding in place, you know, a lot of times when you hear about films mm -hmm. being made and they're taking 10 years or seven years or yeah, whatever, just... it's because they're trying to raise the money. Okay. You know, really trying to raise the money. <laughs> I mean, if you have the money, it should not take you 10 years to make the film, you know? Well, now, for example, mm -hmm. Black Panther, and I don't remember exactly which film it was that you had said 10 years. Black, I think Black the, Panther did. Take, no, Black Panther only took a couple of years. Oh, um, really? Okay. Yeah, uh, Two Dollars and a the, Dream and The Black Press yeah. took, took a while because those mm -hmm. were films where we had to kind of piece together the money. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we had an idea and then we got uh, a little money here, we got a little money there, and we shot okay. some, we got a little money there, a little money there. Um, but, you know, um, it, with, with, with Miles, uh, we had the money. So mm -hmm. um, it took about three years to make the film. Okay, we're going to have to wrap up. I want to make sure that you inform the filmmakers, uh, aspiring filmmakers, if you could give them three pointers if they wish to pursue the field of documentary film, what do you suggest? I think for filmmakers, make, make sure that they love what they love filmmaking, make sure they love what they do and are not doing it for the glory because there's not a lot of glory. Um, Unless you're Stanley Nelson. Learn, learn, <laughs> At this learn point. the equipment, you know, learn, learn, learn the equipment, you know, um, uh, learn how to edit, learn how to shoot, and see a lot of films. You know, you, you can see uh, you can see almost any documentary film you want at any time on your phone. You know, on 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 Netflix, Hulu, whatever, Amazon. You know, see a lot of films, see a lot of different films. There's no excuse. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in film school, we had to wait till they got the 16 millimeter film and the projector and rented it and put it on. You know, now you can you, know, you can look at a film, you can hear a name of a film and look it up. You can look up what films are nominated for the Academy Award and look at them all the documentaries one by one. Um, so film so, school is still important. I mean, I think films. I think film school is important. I think but learning the equipment and learning, you know, what you want to do and have this uh, and, and just try to be really excellent in, in, in what you do and, right. and learn. I mean, that's what I'm still trying to do. I'm still trying to learn. You know, every time I make a film, trying to get better. You know, that's what that's what I'm trying to do. If I could say just one more thing, sure. I, just, I just don't want to forget that besides uh, uh, the Harlem Doc Fest, mm -hmm. which you can look up, just go to Harlem Doc yeah. Fest. Yeah. The November film 15th. No, is, no, the yeah. 17th is the exactly seven. when Miles mm -hmm. will be showing as right. a closing film. Right, but it's also at the African Diaspora International Film Festival, right. so which you, you can look it. at. Mm -hmm. You can go online, just look up the African okay. Diaspora International Film Festival, which is also a great, great festival. Uh, great people who, who do that festival, and uh, yeah, you can find the film there. So I think it's on twice there, um, once... I want to say the 30th of November, mm -hmm. okay. and once in December, but you can look We'll it make up. sure, we're go okay. you know, like I said, we are going to put it on the, the Vimeo or YouTube so that we can provide all Great. of the information, mm -hmm. and we can, you know, include that in the description. Great. Um, Great. So, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll put it in the newspaper, and I'm sure that Richard <laughs> will do a, re a rave review. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, I just want to talk about your institute, yeah. because, you, you know, I know you've been building this, yeah, yeah. And, and you had a gala the other night yeah, that unfortunately yeah, yeah. I couldn't attend, yes. but, uh, you know, only because of my, I had to rest my voice for today. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I know you, you were know? well. I, I exactly. talked to you. I remember. So, and, and I really appreciate you coming in, you know, at the last minute, because sure. I was... I was like, I said, I gotta get Stanley, I gotta get Stanley, the film is back. Yeah. And you know, so to be able to reach you, uh, it's, it's just, and for you to come, you know, at the last mm -hmm. minute, it's yeah. just wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, as I said, tell us a little bit, a bit about the Institute, because you are helping to build the next generation, I guess, of 
documentary filmmakers? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, we have a, a thing called the Documentary Lab, and mm -hmm. um, we it's our we just celebrated our tenth anniversary. Oh, see, which I'm is saying, incredible. Did I say fifth year? No, yeah, tenth like anniversary. Five, 15 We've years. had eighty graduates from the lab, and that's uh -huh. just incredible. And so. Um, you know, we work with filmmakers of color all over the country to help them make films and get their films out and on the air. Um, and so how do they qualify for this? Uh, we have like an open call. If you go mm -hmm. to firelightmedia.org and then you go to the Documentary Lab, you can find out information uh, about the open call. It's, it's a very a rigorous application process. Okay. So we had like 10 slots that we just filled. We had 220 applications mm -hmm. for 10 slots and mm. we, you know, get them on and uh, we help filmmakers make their fi first or second feature film and get them done and on the air. We had a so Bunch it's not just documentaries. It's all it's, documentaries. It's oh, all okay. documentary features. And okay, we, like we had a, Yeah, yeah. Right. We had um, a bunch of films at Sundance uh, this year. A couple of our mm. films won awards at Sundance. We've won every award there is uh, with the films, and we've just wow. been able to get great films and great filmmakers and help them get their careers started. Outstanding. That's fantastic. Yeah. So when they start, do they have to have a film or yeah, just they, a concept? No, they come really in. They come. The they come film. in with. They can come in with a trailer. They can mm -hmm. come in right. with anything. So yeah. you know, some people come in and they have full funding. Some people yeah. come in and they have you know fifteen thousand dollars and mm -hmm. they're trying. But but we want people to come in. You know, with something, um, because if you come in to us and you say, I have this idea, and I don't have any money, mm -hmm. uh -oh. what can we tell you? You know, like, oh, go get some money. You know? so, <laughs> so, yeah. so, so we want people to come in, but a lot of times they come in with very little money, and we help them. We might help them make a sample reel. We might help uh -huh. them write the proposal, uh -huh. we, you know, and then we work with them for... 18 months to, you know, like go to the next step and the next step and the next step. Oh, wow. So, That's extraordinary. Yeah, so if you go to firelightmedia.org and then you go to the uh, documentary lab, you can find out more right. about what we do. And is there a, you know, certain level, I mean, I've heard different things, 100,000, you know, that you really is reasonable to try and do a documentary or? I, I mean, it, you know, I mean, look, it, it, really, it really depends. I, I think that if you're trying to do a feature like documentary, you know, you're probably talking about three hundred thousand dollars and up. You know, right. that's what it costs. But you know, there there are funders out there. You know, there, we we've been very successful in in helping people get funding. Um, you know, if, if if they have a good idea and they have the talent. I mean, you know, we you know we're not a, we're not a college program. You right. know, we're not for students. A lot of the people are people who have worked in the industry mm -hmm. a lot of time there's a lot of women in the, in the in the program because so many times you know women are are, are kind of are kind of molded to kind of be helpmates and, right. you know and and nobody kind of you know says okay you know you're ready to direct Yes. And what we say to, to, to people, mm -hmm. you know, women and other other people, women and men, we say, you know, you're ready to direct. Okay. You know, you've been, you know, uh, you've been a researcher long enough. You know, you have a great idea. You've been a, a producer long enough. You've been an archivist long enough. You know, you're ready to, to direct. And we try to push push uh, people into directing. Well, that sounds wonderful. And we look forward to maybe even uh, talking about some of those uh, fellowship uh, recipients. Come. Yeah, because you're here in New York, so yeah, you know, got to come by more often. It's simple. And Absolutely. we have more time. But thank you so much for sharing, you know, the, the backstory <laughs> on Miles Davis, Birth of the Cool. And again, you can see it this week on November 17th at the Harlem Documentary Film Festival. And then later in the month, we'll, you know, we'll provide that information uh, on our extended uh, YouTube or, and Vimeo uh, upload uh, for Inside New York. Okay? Beautiful. Thank game. you again. Thank you. And right. congratulations, Stanley. Thank you so much. Miles started very early. He looked at things differently. He saw things differently. Without a doubt, the most unique person I've ever known. He wanted to be an artist just like Stravinsky. A lot of the old guys thought that if you went to school, it would make you play like you were white. If you learned something from theory, you would lose the feeling in your playing. I wanted to see what was going on in all of music. Julia, in the daytime and at night, he'd be on 52nd Street. He put the bell of his horn right into the microphone and changed the whole world of jazz right there. 
he comes up with a style that is truly reflective of who he is. He was angry, antisocial. But then he starts playing and people are like, oh, he just disarms you. He surrounded himself with young, emerging, unknown voices. We were kids. We were looking at every night going to a laboratory. Miles was a head chemist. He wanted us to live on the stage, creating in front of the people. Don't lean on what you know. What he was looking for is the stuff that you don't know. We didn't just want to play with Miles Davis. We wanted to be Miles Davis. <laughs> 